All right, now let's move on to the next three higher orders. We're going to look at the Megaloptera through the Neuroptera. So the Megaloptera are commonly known as the Dobson flies, the Adler flies, or the fish flies. These are relatively large insects. I mean, just look at those photos up top here. That's pretty big, about the size of spanning your hand or so uh, for the larger species. Uh, they have these large clear wings and then they fold them back over their abdomen. Okay, in general, they have very strong um, mandibles. Uh, they're adapted for chewing, although many species don't feed as adults, just like those stoneflies, just like those uh, ephemeroptera that we looked at. In the Megaloptera, the females lay thousands of eggs in a single mass. She is going to place those on vegetation that overhangs the water. And then when the, the young, the uh, naiads, hatch out, um, they're going to fall into the water where they dwell in fresh water for their entire uh, naiad period. Now, the larvae or the naiads will feed on aquatic insects. So these are predators in that young stage. And they can take several years to develop into the adult form. So they are very slow growers when they are actually in this young uh, period. Now, the adults live terrestrially, so they live around the water, and they just sort of flutter around up on the, uh, um, on the banks there. So when you find them, these are highly uh, related or closely related to uh, healthy water systems, areas where the water is not very polluted. Now, the next order, these are the Raphidioptera or the snake flies. These are very closely related to Dobson flies. I mean, just look at them there. They look pretty much the same, except you can see that that first thoracic segment, that prothoracic region in this snake fly is really, really elongate. Okay, so you'll see that they look an awful lot like these Dobson flies. And they also look an awful lot like these lace wings, almost as if the Dobson flies and the lace wings had babies, right? Right in the middle, we've got a Raphidioptera. So that's how um, we came to support uh, right at the beginning that these three species or three groups are very closely related. Okay, so the Raphidioptera, uh, they are predatory organisms, both as the adults and the larvae, and they're characterized by that very elongate prothorax, hence the name snake fly. So they have that really long head and sort of quote unquote neck region. Now, the females have these very long ovipositors. You can actually see that right here. See this long sclerotized organ? So remember, lay down eggs with that. So these very long or ovipositors, uh, if they were able to sting us, they could sting pretty deep, but they don't. These ovipositors are very flexible. So they're able to use these ovipositors to get their eggs into these crevices in bark or rotting wood. They do not or cannot pierce skin or bark or anything like that. They actually have to find something that's already rotten and opening in order to move these eggs in. But because their ovipositors are so large, they're able to get very, very deep into that rotting wood. So their eggs are protected. Now, the young uh, have very large mandibles and they have this adhesive organ on the abdomen. This adhesive organ allows them to fasten onto vertical surfaces. Now, both the larvae and the adults, or the young and the adults, are predatory, but they're not very strong predators. So they only feed on weak prey. So they only catch and kill weak prey. I mean, look at that, their body form. They don't have really strong front legs like we see in Mantidia. They don't have really large mandibles like we're seeing, say, on the Dobson flies up here. So they don't go for these really large organisms that can fight things off. Instead, they tend to go for the weaker prey, the weaker, the soft-bodied organisms. Finally, the Neuroptera. Now, the word neuron means sinew or nerve, while terra means wings. And so this is uh, named for these nerve-like wings or the uh, sinew-like patternings on the wings of the Neuroptera. Now, while the other two groups, other two orders in this group 
um, or in this lecture, you may not have seen, I can pretty much guarantee you've seen Neuroptera. They are really, really common. We commonly know them as lace wings, so they have these very pretty wings. And this group actually used to be much bigger. It actually used to uh, include the Megaloptera and the Raphidioptera all in one large order. However, over time and with the advances in DNA and all people started looking at it, um, they looked at their morphology, they looked at their habitats, they ended up uh, splitting them up into three separate orders because of that. So you got these three major uh, orders now. So Neuroptera, the females will lay their eggs in the environment. Uh, and what she does is she creates these slender silken stalks and then lays the eggs on top there. So if you've ever come home and you've seen, say, what looks like you know, little uh, pieces of thread with eggs on top on your door or somewhere like that, she'll often either lay them in a line, maybe a little spiral, something like that. Those are Neuropteran eggs. Every year I get a few Neuropteran eggs. Uh, egg clutches on my front door. Uh, one year I got some on the inside of my uh, windshield. So I'd left the window down d in the spring because it was nice out. And uh, she came in and laid her eggs there. So I had to be very careful until those hatched, you know. So if you ever see that, and I get a lot of people asking, like, what are these? It's eggs on little stalks. Now you know, they're lace wings. Okay, so you can get these in a lot of different places. Now, the young Neuroptera have specialized mouth parts. So Neuroptera are hardcore. So the young have the sickle-shaped mandibles and maxillae. They interlock to form pinchers, and they are predaceous. So what these young do is they will feed on soft-bodied insects primarily, especially those insects that are feeding on plants. So they are really, really great for biocontrol. So the aphids or the, oh, white fly or, uh, oh, scale insects or whatever, anything that is feeding on your plants, these uh, lacewing larvae will uh, wander up. So they're on these plants and they're going to impale these soft-bodied insects on their pinchers. So then the prey's body contents, their, their, their hemolymph, are sucked out between these hollow food channels running between the adjacent mandibles and maxillae. So they basically, they basically macerate these uh, organisms, their blood, they suck their blood, and then they take their bodies. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. They take their dead bodies and stick them on the spines of their back. So the uh, young Neuroptera have these spiny bodies, and they use this as camouflage. So other Neuroptera will pick up uh, things in the environment, leaves and dirt and whatever. Uh, others will pick up the the bodies of their prey and shove them on their back. What this does is they will camouflage themselves. So they use the scent and the look of the environment and their prey to make sure that their new prey don't know that they're coming. If that's not hardcore, I don't know what is. <laughs> okay, so as these young, as these larvae, the lace wings do not have a complete digestive system. The midgut ends at, the, at a dead end. There's no anal opening like we've seen in our basal insect. So what this means is that they are not pooping in the environment. They are not leaving traces of that they are there in the environment. This is good for a predator. This is a way to, to mask their presence from their potential prey. So instead, the waste materials are going to accumulate in this mid-gut dead end throughout the development. Once the uh, larvae encloses or sheds its last exoskeleton into the adult stage, that's when it gets rid of all this accumulated waste. So it's some weird stuff going on there, and it makes them very, very effective predators. And because of that, they are used for biological control for aphids and other plant feeding insects. They are considered beneficial. You can actually buy Neuroptera from the hardware store if you wanted to, say, release them in your yard or something like that. They're usually in the garden section in this little fridge. You can buy Neuroptera. You can buy maybe some praying mantises. You can buy some ladybird beetles. Yeah. You can buy several of these things and just release them. Now, the Neuroptera come in several colors. The most common that I see are this green, think about it, camouflage, and brown, again, camouflage. So if you turn your lights on at night, especially during the spring and the summer when you have a lot of plant pests outside, you will often see these little fluttery brown or green uh, species. That's because the adults are nocturnal.
So you'll see them fluttering around your porch light. Those are the Neuroptera. She will lay up to 300 eggs, almost twice her body weight. However, there are plenty of other insects around that will eat those eggs if they find them. So she doesn't glue them directly on the plant stem. First, she produces a little drop of sticky silk. And then, at the end of that, the egg. It's suspended safely in midair. The silk is produced by glands in her abdomen in liquid form. It's the very act of pulling it out that changes it from liquid to solid. And that is true for all invertebrate silk. She will lay up to 30 eggs a day each on its own stalk. That silken thread is so incredibly fine that insect predators like these ants walk right by the eggs without realizing that there's a tasty meal within millimeters of them. So despite regular ant patrols in search of food, the lacewing's eggs remain undiscovered. After three days, they begin to hatch. Now, at least, if danger threatens, her offspring will be able to help themselves by running away. All right, so we're going to end that group there. Let me know if you have any questions.